So the biggest L I ever took, I just started engineering. I got thrown into, uh, I started, was entering at a studio. I got thrown into a session. Pro Tools was new-ish, had been around for a while, but I was, you know, I, I learned how to use Pro Tools early on and got in the studios. That's kind of how I got my internship. Got thrown into a session with a pretty big artist, uh, smooth jazz artist, not going to name names. They had flown a singer from Chicago. This, I was living in Boston at the time. They flew a singer from Chicago in. And they, you know, we cut a bunch of vocals, ton of vocals. Singer flew back, all is cool. A week later, the artist came back in, and we went to, you know, pull up the session to start mixing it and work on it and do edits and stuff. I wasn't mixing yet; I was just doing editing. And open the session, and all the vocal files are missing. That little blue missing file icon in Pro Tools was there. I had no idea. That's strange. So I start searching around the computer. Couldn't find them anywhere. I hadn't done my disk allocation correctly. I didn't understand disk allocation. I didn't understand file management. And I lost the files of the singer that came all the way from Chicago to Boston just to sing on this song. I don't know how I'm still working in this business after that. I don't know how I was still working at that studio after this. But, you know, we made it right. We She came back. <laughs> redid it. And I never messed up file uh, management after that. So in today's video, I want to show you guys the ins and outs of file management. First, I'm going to go over how to get your hard drive set up correctly on your computer, the best way for backups, the best way to make sure you're always organized and you don't lose files. Then I'm going to show you in Pro Tools, Studio One, and Logic, how to make sure you don't lose files. Because a lot of times, if you just leave them in your download folder, and then you just drag them into the session, and then you send it to another producer or an engineer, those files are going to be missing. They're still going to be in your downloads folder if you aren't doing certain steps. So I'm going to show you how to get, do those. If you learn them on these three DAWs, or if you just skip ahead to your DAW, you can do that. You should be able to translate this information to other DAWs if that's what you're using. Before we get started, please like and subscribe. Let's go. All right, guys. So first and foremost, I was going to do some B-roll with, with my drives, but that's pretty boring. So I'm going to show you how this is all set up here at my studio. Um, I have a couple of these. I got two. I got one for audio and I got one for video. They're both the T, I think one's a T5 and a T7. That part doesn't matter so much. What you really want is a, a solid state drive. And these Samsungs are, are the best. They're relatively cheap for what they give you. Um, and they're just super fast. USB 3.2. If you have something lower, you can get the, they usually come with plugs for others. But that's the main drive I use. I do not use my main hard drive that comes with your computer that has your system information on it for recording audio. It used to be a big deal not to do that. I'm not sure. I haven't done the research to find out if it's still not a big deal because most of that was due to disk fragmentation, which we don't have to worry about so much anymore with these solid state drives. However, um, the computers are coming with smaller drives these days. So you won't be able to record a whole lot in your main drive anyway. And it's, it's still good practice, I think, to keep them separated. So I, I highly suggest, first and foremost, you just get one of these Samsung T7 drives. I'll put links to this stuff below so you can see exactly what I'm using. Um, and this will allow you to have a separate hard drive. Even if, you know, if you're going to another studio, you can take the hard drive and plug it right in and all your files will be there so that they can pull it up on their, their system. Um, it just makes things a lot easier and keeps the more organized by separating them from your main drive. Now, the other thing you have to always be worried about, and I have gone through, there's probably been three times I've lost drives before I really started learning how to back up correctly and keeping on track and stuff. And when I lost drives, it was kind of before there was really a cloud <laughs> shows my age, but, um, you know, I've, I've spent thousands of dollars taking hard drives to repair shops to try to get repaired. Um, or, you know, bring files back that we lost. Cause it was like the main drive at, at a studio. And there was no backup. And so, you know, you can end up spending a lot of money trying to get drives fixed. Uh, so what I always suggest is backing up your drives. So you could do that a couple ways. You could get two of these and just sync them every couple days, make sure that they have the same stuff. That way is kind of a little bit hard and I'm sure there's some software that could do that for you. But what I do and what I always suggest is using Dropbox. There's a couple of reasons for that. So the way my studio set up is the Dropbox drive is this drive basically. So everything that goes 
into my session folder goes right up to Dropbox too. And that's great for the main reason, which is everything's backed up on this drive. I don't have to worry if this drive crashes for some reason or my studio burns down. All my recent clients' folders and, and mixes are in the cloud and I can get them back. So I don't have to stress about that. The other great reason to have a Dropbox with your, your main working drive is because you can, uh, if you're at home or you're on the road and a client calls and says, hey, I got to get this mix. I lost the wave. Can you send it over? No problem. I go right to my Dropbox, either on my phone or my laptop. I can you know, search my client's name copy the link and send it right to them right from the phone so you know it saves you a lot of time if you're you're not at the studio you can still send files and 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 one of the best things about being a good engineer is being able to you know get things to clients quickly so dropbox is really great for both those reasons now as your career progresses and you need more hard drive space and you know i only buy a couple terabytes of um space on Dropbox because cloud stuff gets expensive after a while. So then you might want to move on when you start needing to have lots of backups. You know, I have 10 to 15 years of backups. Uh, You might want to move on to something like this. So this is called a NAS drive, if you guys don't know. And it's basically like a RAID system. So I have this plus another one (laughs) of, uh, I think, five, five or six bays of hard drives. And these work fast. You can actually, and I've done this, you can actually work off these drives. However, they're just a little bit slow and and trashing things can get a little weird sometimes. So I use these basically just for backup, but you can work off them if if that's something you want to do. Um, I just find the Samsungs to be super fast and and a little bit better for, for, you know, what I'm doing. Uh, But these work great to work off as well. That being said, I use them just for backups and what I do is is I set them up at a RAID so there's a redundancy. So if one drive, one drive is always showing, they're always copying everything on two different drives, basically. So I have everything on one drive is also on the other drive too. So you can start off with this two bay one to have both. And Synology does a really good job of doing that where it doesn't take up like a whole two drives. Of sp- you know, if you have a file that's, uh, you know, 100 megabytes and you're on a 100 megabyte drive, the second drive wouldn't take a whole 100 megabytes. They have some way of doing it where they, you know, can compress it and make it smaller so it's not taking up so much system resources. And the cool thing about these two is I started off with this one. And once the starter got in full, you can buy a bigger rack, a bigger one with, you know, six more. That's not so much the brain like this one is, but it's just extra bays and add on to this. So you can build on to this thing if you start off with one of these ones. And they have a bunch of other companies that do them. Do your research on them. This was the one at the time that worked great for me um, and, and and so forth. So this is with two four uh, terabyte drives. You can, and I maybe suggest just buying the bay and then buying a bunch of bigger drives separate because you can get up to eight, eight terabytes. You want to spend as much money as you can on the biggest drives so they last long. So that's the basics of good file management if you do this you'll always have your files there'll never be a crash you won't have to stress out about it when it does happen because it will happen and your life will just be much better uh over the long run so now let's hop into pro tools and i'm going to show you guys some quick uh tips about file management with pro tools all right guys so here's the main um window when you want to start a new song in pro tools uh first couple things on this page Local storage session, that's what it's always on. That way it always saves to your drive. If you do this one, that's the cloud thing that Avid has. I've never used it. Maybe it works great, but I do local storage session. And then down here, I always want to make sure it's prompt for location. That way it's going to pop up and ask me where I want to put this file. You always want to know where you're putting your stuff so you can find it later. Um, I found a lot of people will just keep, you know, save song, no idea where it's going. And then when it's time to send it to a mixer or something, you have the hardest time getting your session out of there. Uh, so always know where you're putting your stuff. If you're, I do this because I always like to make a new folder for the client, and I'll show you about that in a second. If you're just a single artist and you're just doing stuff at home, you don't have to worry about the clients, um, you could do this and set the location to be on that T5 drive or T7 drive, and then you don't have to worry about it. You can just save a new song and they'll all go to that drive. So that's one thing you could do, but... I like to do this so I I can always say exactly where I want it to go, okay? So we're going to hit create new session. We're going to call this Bob Dog, Bob's Dog. And we're going to hit create. 
and it's going to take us to um, Matty. I'm going to go to my Matty Mixer drive. Matty Mixes drive. This is my T5 drive. I'm going to call a new folder, Bobby Bob. He's my new client, and we're going to create the folder. Now it's going to make this new folder where we're going to put this song into. So that way, Bob's got his own folder, and we're going to hit save. Bob's going to have his own folder, so I always know where to go get his files. And when Bob sends his next song about his cat, I put it right in that folder, and it's always there. I always know where to go for Bob's stuff. So that makes it really easy to organize and so on and so forth. Now, the other thing you really have to understand in Pro Tools is when you import audio, okay? So if I'm going to import some of these audio files to start mixing, these are, say, Bob's files, right? You got to got to make sure you hit copy. Okay? If I hit copy, it's going to take these and put them into the audio files folder in Bob's session. That way when I send it back to Bob, he can open it at his studio and see everything I've done. If you hit add, okay? Which Pro Tools defaults to, so you always got to be careful to make sure you hit copy. If you hit add, then this is going to keep say this folder is in my downloads folder, which it is. Right, Bob sent me the files. I downloaded it, went to my downloads folder. If I hit add, these files are gonna stay in the folder in the download folder and not go to Bob's audio files, okay? And why is that important? Well, when I go to my downloads folder next week and I delete everything in my downloads folder, I'll be deleting all of Bob's files along with it. So always, 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 and this will change your life forever, make sure to click copy when you bring files in. All right, so, that's that, and let's move over to Logic to show you some things there. All right, guys, so we got this, this uh, Logic session open. Now, if you want, like, make sure to follow the Pro Tools, like the intro of the Pro Tools video, just to show where how to put your files and folders and make sure everything's in the same place. That's the same thing here. Um, now, the only difference is you just, it's a different program, right? But I did want to show you one thing in Logic uh, as far as importing audio files and exporting audio files. If you have files and you've, you've imported them and they're all of your drive, if you're going to send this to someone or you want to make sure all the files are in one place, you can go to save a copy as. And when that pops up, make sure to select audio files and then save it back to your hard drive. Or if you're just sending it to someone, you can do a desktop, whatever you want. But always make sure to select audio files. And if you're using sampler stuff or some of the space designer stuff, it's always good to throw those in too. That way when you send it to someone or, you know, like I said, delete everything off your downloads folder, all your files will still be in the logic session it's supposed to be. So that's basically all you need to know um, as an extension from the, the intro of the Pro Tools section of this video. But this is the logic stuff that will be helpful for you. Let's check out Studio One really quick. All right guys, so here's Studio One. Same thing applies as that Pro Tools intro as far as how to save your files. But there's something very uh, tricky in Studio One that you've got to be careful with. And I've had this happen a bunch when clients send over. The same thing. And, and you know, Studio One, and you can do this in Pro Tools and the other pro files too. But um, you can just drag the stems in as far as importing them with Pro Tools, right? So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll just drag these in here and we'll be good to go, right? Now... What happened just now is we dragged them into this session, which we have saved on our external hard drive, but these files still live in the download folder that they were at. So what happens when I delete these files off my download folder, and I'm like, oh, well, I got them in my session. We're good to go. All these files will delete. So you open the session and nothing will play. There'll be nothing there. You have to go to, um, you have to copy the files in with Studio One, or at least tell them to, right? And that's by clicking this, copy external files. So now, do you want to copy these external files to the media media folder? Yes, you do. So now these are actually in the folder with this session so that if I do delete the files off the download um, folder, I still have these in my mix and everything is good. So you always want to make sure you do that because you're going to lose a lot of files if you don't do that. One thing that's best to do with Studio One is somewhere in here, and I have to find it again because it's been forever since I've done this. Um, there's actually an option to always copy uh, the files. So just to dig around here, let's see if we can find it really quick. <laughs> um, it's in one of these menus here, audio, console, service, sync. Uh, 
I'll try to put it in the description. I'm not going to sit here and make you guys watch me try to find this. But um, always make sure to, to enable this option if we can find it. And it will be uh, super helpful. You won't have to actually, what I'm saying is you won't have to actually go in here and go to copy every single time. It will do it for you as soon as you hit the save button. So that's that for Studio One. So I hope this video is helpful for you guys. I know it's a lot of information and it might not work for one DAW, but it's all the same stuff really, even if it's different DAWs. Um, it's just doing good file management and you won't ever have to worry about that. There's no worse feeling than getting to a studio and half your files are still on your downloads folder at home. So let me know what you guys think below. If you got any tips for file management, put them in the comments below. If you need your song mixer mastered, hit me up at mixermastermysong.com. You can also find my presets and courses there too. Talk to you soon.